welcome back to episode 10 of Coffee Chats. Today we're here with Anna and yeah, we're going to talk about some really exciting stuff. She's been to law school, she's lived in so many cool places and we're going to chat all about all of that stuff today. So hi Anna. Hi Heather, thank you so much for having me. Of course. So the first bit that we do in every episode is the get to know you section. So Anna, what are three fun facts about you? Oh god, okay. Um... I think the first one that I always tell everyone is that I have the celiac disease. I don't think that's like super common. I only know one girl my age kind of that has it. Um, Another one is that I have no intention on living in Brazil for the rest of my life. Even if I'm Brazilian, I'm not a fan of the country. And I love reading. Let's go, let's end with a really simple one, I guess. Have you read any good books recently? Oh, yeah, I just finished Jane Eyre. I don't know if, how I, you pronounce okay. it. Oh, I love Jane Eyre. Love it. I think, I feel like in, when I was like in secondary school, which is like high school, I don't know what you call it. Um, I think I went and watched the play of it and it was really good, but I was quite young. So it was a bit like, I didn't really understand what was going on. But yeah, I'd quite like to read it. Yeah, it's really good. Actually, here in Brazil, we don't usually read those books for sh- from Charlotte Bronte, the Bronte sisters, but I really got to know them because of Twilight, which is like very embarrassing. But I started reading those bo- their books and they're like actually so good. Yeah, I, I love it. I want to get into more into like classics and stuff because I always just read like an easy book, but yeah. Yeah, they really surprised me, honestly. I didn't think they would be like that good, but they were really good. I really liked them. Okay, so let's go on to what is the highlight of your week? Oh, the highlight of my week is that it's carnival here in Brazil. Like, obviously, the um, street parties are not happening because we are in a pandemic. But even like, even though we don't have the parties, I still have two days holiday for this week, so I don't have to work the whole week. That's my highlight of the highlights. That's exciting. What do you normally do for carnival, like, when there's not a pandemic? Oh my god, it's so fun. I feel like everyone should come to a Brazilian carnival at least once in their lives, because it's, like, party on the streets all day, all night, and this is, this happens for, from Friday nights until Tuesday nights. So it's like people partying in the streets, listening to music and drinking. It's just like, it's so fun. And people dress up in costumes. So fun. I love it. Okay. So what is your coffee order? Um, plain iced latte, really. Good choice. Okay. And so I've already mentioned that you went to law school and all of that stuff. But could you just give us a bit of a brief summary from your sort of version of what you do? So I went to law school here in Brazil. And law school here actually lasts five years and is right after high school. So I did that. It was hard and it was like a long time. It feels like it's never going to end. And then I recently graduated in the middle of last year, which was in the middle of the pandemic, which sucked really. And since then, I am an attorney in, in international law office here in Brazil. Very nice. Okay, so we're going to talk about law school first. Um, So what was the application process like? So it might be a bit different, obviously, you're in Brazil. I think most of my viewers are probably English, so it might be a bit different, but I feel like it's still interesting. Yeah, funny thing about law school is that it's so different, literally every country. But here in Brazil, um, it's even more different for, for every college that you decide to go to because there isn't an application. You really just take a test. So if you want to go to a federal uh, university, that those are the hardest ones to get into because they're like really hard. You have to take this national exam right after you are done with high school. And they are really, really, really hard to get into. I tried twice and I wasn't able to do it. And then I tried for this private school that is a really good private law school here as well and then I got into that so it was just a simple test it was mainly uh, um, about Portuguese grammar um, interpretation and I think I had to read two books for that test but it was just that it's not really hard to get into there 
but really hard to stay in that school. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. Okay, and so sort of why you wanted to go to law school? When did you make that decision? What sort of led you to that decision? Um, funny enough, I've never thought about law school in my life, actually. I thought about every single things that I could do with my life, but I never thought about becoming an attorney or anything like that. But then um, I did, I was an exchange student for high school in the Netherlands when I was 16. And my mom visited me there for, I think a week or a weekend, something like that, I can remember now. And I had to decide what I wanted to do with my life. And then I really wanted to be a journalist but at least here in Brazil, I don't know how it is in other countries, but here you don't have to go to college to be a journalist. So my mom told me that and she said, OK, why don't you go to law school? Because if that's not what you want to do, because 16, 17 is such a young age for you to decide what you want to do with the rest of your life. So I see I see where she came from, that she wanted me to have more opportunities and more options for me to choose from. So she said, why don't you choose law school and then you can be a journalist, but you can do a bunch of other things. Yeah. So I was like, oh, okay, but it makes sense. Like I was so out of touch with my life, I guess, that I was like, oh, okay. And then I just went for law school. That's how it happened. Yeah, so I'm kind of in a similar sort of situation. So I'm currently in my second year of university out of a three year course for criminology. Um, which I decided on when I was like probably like 17, I guess, um, because I, at college I was doing psychology, sociology, media, and I did law in my first year as well. So that kind of led me to criminology, but now I kind of want to be a journalist. So, I mean, criminology does kind of work for it, especially with sociology as well. But um, yeah, like at that age, I would never have thought of being a journalist, but yeah, I think in... I've done like a couple of like Zoom classes with journalists over lockdown and I've asked like, do you need a degree in journalism? And a lot of them have said, yeah, but some of them have also been like, no, you just need work experience. So yeah, that is interesting. <laughs> what was your experience at law school like? Uh, it was hard. It was really stressful. That's how I developed my celiac disease because of so much stress, really. So I guess you can tell how it was just by that. <laughs> but um, I'm not going to lie. I, I think it really fit into my personality. Law school, it just kind of made, made sense. Made sense. I, I don't know. Like moms know everything, I guess. So she was just like, oh, this is going to fit you. And really did. Um, I think I wouldn't have chosen anything different, really. Yeah. It was really good. I met amazing people. I had amazing experiences with college parties, even like just the day to day life with in college. But um, I don't know. I I really appreciate it. I guess if I could do something different, it was just like not stress out so much because we stress out so much and it costed me a lot. So yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so. Um, you also mentioned when we were talking before that you did five internships. Um, so what were the five internships? Yeah, I really like went there for five <laughs> internships. So I, my first one was, um, I didn't get anything for that. I just worked because I needed the experience was in the public defender's office. It was a really good one. It was mostly family law. And it was kind of deep, really hard, but it was really good. I got, I learned so much from it. I think from my internships that that was the one that I learned the most from. And then public attorney's office was the second one. From that one, I can say that I met amazing people. I didn't learn so much, but it was like a good experience, I guess, to know that what I didn't want in my life. It was mostly tax law, which I do not recommend for anyone because it's so boring, it's terrible. <laughs> it was like, oh my God, it's awful. And then my third one was in this law office. It was mostly health law, so like civil law, but then specialized in health law. It was good. I learned a lot. I met amazing people, but still not my 
best internship, I guess. But I really wanted to get into, maybe I, I decided that I wanted to be an attorney. So I really needed to go for an internship that wasn't from the government, pretty much. And I was like, oh, I need to get like a, an internship in his law office, like right away. And that was the one that came up to me, which I was like so grateful, but it just wasn't for me. So I stayed there for just a semester and I was done with it. I just wanted another one. And then my fourth one was in this another law office. It was business law. I liked it, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted because I really wanted to work with lawsuits and they were plain um, cons consultants, I guess, kind of. But I met great people and I have friendship with them till these days. They are like really my friends. I love them. And I, I think it just wasn't for me. And fun fact, the person that got me that internship was the girl like she was my friend but she used to do my nails <laughs> like how that happened I, I don't know I guess like you, knowing people from everywhere can get you at places that you never wonder where and then my fifth one is the the law office that I work today that is international law so pretty much family and business law but I work more with family law so you kind of said like connections help to find internships. So obviously you've had five, so you must have some experience in finding them. How did you find them? Oh, okay. So yeah, networking is actually so important. Just like um, having friends really, I guess. Something about law school that I learned since I got into my school, like my first semester, was that I really needed to get to know people because once they were out of an internship, like there was a spot right there. So maybe they could say, oh, this person is perfect for the spot. And that was amazing because that's how I got my first internship. So it was my friend's internship at first, um, the public defender's office. And then she was like, okay, this is like an opening spot. I learned a lot with them. It was my first internship. So maybe it can be yours as well. So that's how I got my first one. The second one, I am so embarrassed to say, but that's true. It was my uncle who got it for me. It was really usual um, in the floor that I worked at. It was pretty much like that of friends and family. That's how people got internships there. It was, I mean, that's why it wasn't such a good place to work at, I guess. So, and then the third one, I got it for myself because I was really decided that I wanted to get an internship by myself without anyone helping. I thought it was a really important experience that I had to get. So I just, it took me longer, really. It took me harder work and everything, but I really caught it by myself. Um, the fourth one was through the girl that I used to do my nails. And the fifth one was all me again. Yeah, I definitely think it is so hard to find them when you're doing it without it any is. connections or anything like that. Like, yeah, it's so hard. You, you actually have to put so much more work into it. And I didn't have any clue how, how hard it was until I, I think I sent my resume for over, I don't even know how many months to get that internship. I think like six, maybe. It was like really, really hard, especially because I only had experience in government internships and they don't, they're not like super valued here in Brazil as well. So yeah, and also oftentimes when you do one with like a family friend or like your uncle or something, you don't even always need to send in like your resume or something because they, they're just like, like, this will be good. Like, I know. Yeah, I actually had to send it, but I don't think it matters so much. Yeah. It was just like, oh, just send it. So just so we don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. So what do you feel like you, I mean, you kind of already said, but what do you think is like the main thing that you gain from doing your internships? Uh, work with different people. And I learned that school is not everything. I've, I keep learning that. I keep forgetting that I have this in my life and experience and everything. Because, so like I said, the federal universities, they are the best ones here. But I've worked in the past with so many people that graduated in on these 
federal universities that they could not work for their lives. They, they suck at being attorneys, really. They're like so bad. And then recently on the office, we got this girl that she, she came from this private school that is not considered a good school, but she is rocking her cases. So I think this is like the biggest thing. It doesn't matter so much about your school. I mean, kind of matters, but yeah. more like your personal investment on yourself and to work and everything. I guess that's the biggest thing I learned. That's very important to remember because I do think like a lot of well, obviously it is important like you said like school and what school you go to is important but once you're in a place it's how hard you work. Yeah I think people keep forgetting that I think they think oh I came from a nice school things are just gonna work out for me I don't have to put any effort but that's not how it works. Yeah okay so you said that um, it took you a while to decide what type of law you went into but eventually you sort of decided on international law. So what is international law, firstly, for anyone that doesn't know? So international law is pretty much divided into private and public one. So public one is the relationship, if I can might say, between Brazil, for me, my case, and other countries, between countries externally. And then private ones are, is pretty much... Um, how it change how things work internally in the countries so usually i work with um child abduction for example and then if someone from a parent from brazil had their child abducted to another country we are going to help them to communicate with the central authorities from our country to connect with that countries that the child was abducted to, for example, or if it's the other way around, we are going to do everything possible and um, really file a lawsuit for the child to come back from Brazil to the country that they are from originally. Pretty much like that. That sounds really interesting and also super like emotional and difficult, but important. Yeah, I'm never really bored because we have weird cases. <laughs> we have funny cases as well. It's like, I'm never bored. I guess that's why I love this job so much. I'm never bored. I think in the other ones, it was pretty much the same thing every day. And I cannot do that. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so how did you decide? I guess you have sort of already said this as well. Um, but how did you make your decision on going into that type of law? So I uh, did this exchange to Boston in 2017. So I went to BU for a semester. Pretty much we, I went with my family. Um, I went to BU for a semester. And then there I had this international business law class. And I thought it was really interesting because so far in my life, I was very, very sure that I wanted to go with for, for the government. I wanted just, and it was really fun because it completely, I was like, yeah, no, I want to go for international law or business law. Then I just went to, I went after internships that I could get experience from these areas. So the business law, it didn't really, really work my way. But then I found this inter this international law one. Um, so what does your sort of day-to-day -day job entail? So a lot of emails, lots of emails and calls from clients. Um, really filing lawsuits, motions, drafting motions, drafting contracts, and seeing what we can do for like the next steps, I guess for every client's case. Yeah. And I personally am in charge of international weddings. So it's a whole process. So we have to see what the client needs, what the notary's office needs. It's a struggle, that one, but that's pretty much my day. You said about your semester that you spent at Boston University. So how did that come about? And also what was it like moving to America? Because I feel like, I mean, 
from what you've said you've traveled quite a bit but I feel like America is a very sort of different place yeah so I got to go there because my dad got a postdoc um, spot in Harvard University so he was going to stay there for a year and my family's pretty close so me my mom and my sister we went to we went there to stay with him in Boston for six months and at first I really wanted to take a sabbatical <laughs> because I was so done with law school. I wasn't half of it, by the way, but I was, and I really wanted to do it. So I, I only had intention to take a summer course at UMass Boston, but then after two weeks, it was over. I was so bored that I knew that I had to take something else. So I looked up for things that could actually be beneficial for me in law school, I guess, and I found this course in Boston University. That's how I ended up there pretty much. But it was super different. Like I had visited the United States, I guess, three times already. I went two times for, to New York and once to Disney. <laughs> But living there was completely different. It was just amazing, really. Um, Boston is an amazing city. I am in love with Boston at this point. I am like so scared to go back and ruin my memories that I had in this place. Everything was absolutely perfect. And I guess I just had a little bit of a hard time adapting and making friends just because I was in this class only with international students and they had their own group, the French group and the German group. And they're, I don't know, Asians, they all, um, they were from different nationalities, but they all hang out together. And it was just me, the Brazilian. So I really had to work really hard to make friends there. So I guess it was only the difficult part, but all other else was amazing, really. That sounds so good. Yeah, I my so I was meant to be doing like a placement abroad with this global citizenship program that my university does, but because of COVID, it's all kind of well, basically you can only do it in your first year or second year. So I've got to do it this year, but I don't know if I'll be able to because of COVID. So yeah, that's a bit annoying. But um I hope that I do get to do something because it I feel like it would really add to my like university experience, but we'll see oh yeah 100% it changes your perspective so much I guess what especially you might change your path completely on career wise of what you wanted that would happen for me so I don't know I think it's very important um experience to have during college yeah I really hope so um but we might have to do it virtually which oh it's not the same (laughs) it's terrible (laughs) like yeah but we'll see um so And what sort, I feel like you've kind of said like, but what did you gain from the experience of that semester? Um, A lot of clarity on myself, my life, what I wanted for my life. I think really on more on a personal side, I guess I was... I wasn't really happy with my life. I wasn't sure what I wanted. I just knew that it wasn't exactly what I was living. I think I wasn't in the right place. And then I went to Boston and I made amazing friends. And I, I don't know, I really realized what I wanted for my life. I learned um, to trust myself more that I wanted to live abroad. I don't have an intention to stay in Brazil, I don't think. Um, it's really for me. I understand that a lot of a lot of people love Brazil. It's just not my case, I guess. And lots of self esteem, lots of self esteem, really. That's good. Um, so, as well as your time in America, you've also spent time in Spain and the Netherlands. So, how did that come about as well? And again, just the experience and what you gained from it. So Spain, I was 10. It was also because of my dad, but I was 10. So we stayed the whole year. And oh my God, when you are a kid, everything's so much easier. <laughs> like you just go play with the other kids and everyone adapts so well. It was amazing. I remember that I didn't want to come back home. 
Um, I really wanted to stay there. I had an amazing time. I made friends there, which unfortunately I'm not in touch anymore because it was 15 years ago. It was a long time and I loved it. I think it was such a rich experience for me as a kid. It really changed my life. And the Netherlands, I was 16 and it was more independent kind of, I think, I don't know how is it in United Kingdom, but here in Brazil, a few people, obviously, I'm not going to lie, like wealthier people or have the condition to go to um, semester abroad. I went to, I decided that I wanted to go to Netherlands, not only because we were going to, through that economic crisis of 2012, and I needed to go to a country that was okay economically. And I was between Germany and the Netherlands because they were cheaper, I guess, because they, they're just like so expensive. And then I chose the Netherlands. It was just a high school exchange program. And I, I really dived, I dove into it like so wrong, really because I thought that I was going there to run away from all of my teenage problems. And I was so wrong because it was not like that. The problem was with myself and I took all the problems to the Netherlands. So as much as I love the country, I have amazing friends till this day from there and Brazilian friends that went with me also. My experience was absolutely terrible. Um, <laughs> I hated being there. I just didn't come back home earlier because I was going to lose my entire school year. Otherwise I would have gone back sooner, but it was terrible. I had, I was so immature. I didn't have any maturity to deal with all the problems that came up to me. It was just terrible, really. I think, yeah, I guess, cause at that age, you just think it's gonna be so, amazing and like magical almost but yeah it was not for me I guess now you sort of would think oh these are the things that might not be so perfect yeah yeah I, I thought that it was going to be all butterflies and rainbows that everything was going to go so well and it really wasn't I had a hard time I although like I feel nothing everything happens for a reason so I really had to go through that to just come out of my shell because before I didn't really say anything to everyone I feel everyone just um run ran away ran me away so something <laughs> like that and after that I I learned to really say what I, what I was thinking and just came out of my shell really so I guess that's what that was a good thing and I I learned not to make such impulsive decisions as well it's interesting that you have, um, so when you're in high school, is that, what ages is that from? Um, so usually people go to the exchange program with 16. Oh, okay. Because, so our, we have in the UK, we have primary school, which is like kids, then secondary school, which is like 12 to 16, and then college, which is like 16 to 18, and then university. But we don't have any in high school, in secondary school or um, college, we don't have any sort of, well, at least in my schools, we didn't have any sort of like exchange program or semester abroad options, which I think is kind of a shame, especially if you were doing like language or something, it would be really beneficial. Yeah, it wasn't like really my school. We actually looked for programs outside school. Like it was just a few people that used to do it. It was um, our high school, which is from 15 to 17, but really people used to go at 16, which is like the worst age in my opinion, because <laughs> it's like, you don't know what's going on and you're suddenly going to another country, how come? <laughs> but it's great for the language, like I said. Yeah, yeah, because I did German in um, secondary school and I think it would have been really cool. We didn't even go on a trip or anything. Like, I feel like if we, even if we had just gone for like a week or something, it would have been really cool, but yeah. We did go on a trip to France though, but that was when we were like, how, I feel like we were like 14 when we went to France for like a week. Um, and it was like a residential. So we were just in like with the teachers and it was like. I love that you look, you're like in Europe. So you just 
go on a like field trip and then to another country that's amazing the worst the best that i've gone to on like on a real field trip i think it was in the central market of my city <laughs> yeah we had so you had a couple of options in like secondary school trips somewhere in like this country but there was my sister went to poland for like three days last year literally just before covid hit so she was really lucky that she oh, could go. that's amazing it was so lucky that she went if it had been like a couple of weeks later she probably wouldn't have been able to go um um but yeah like i guess for you that would be really far so you wouldn't really be able to go for that short amount of time yeah because actually like brazil is huge so even to go to another city we, we usually don't go to actually my sister she went on this weekend really field trip to the country kind of yeah on uh, the countryside that's what we get really but <laughs> like I didn't get to live my city really on this um, yeah, we have things like that as well, where you just go like um I live in like a coastal town so we have trips where you go to the beach for like geography and look at the rocks but um yeah then we were lucky enough to have some things like that yeah oh I would be like so happy I didn't I never got this I never got it I mean I know Brazil is huge but we could have at least like left town we didn't do it <laughs> yeah no. my school was like oh we're not gonna take you there <laughs> we went to London a couple of times as well which was really cool because like we so London is like I don't know probably like three hours away from me I would say and our where we live it's like quite countryside small town sort of vibes um so that was really cool and we went that was when we were about 16 and we were able to like go around by ourselves which was really good because like you wouldn't normally do that when you if you went with your family or anything you wouldn't get the opportunity just to walk around with your friends so yeah that was cool um, yeah I love that I wish I was going to London for just like a day or whatever on like a field trip although like I might say that on my exchange on um, the program that we went to Paris for a weekend so I mean I kind of had it but it wasn't like my school but it was nice that makes sense Paris is really nice I went a couple of years ago yeah a bunch of 16 year olds just lose in Paris it was crazy but it was fun yeah. it was like the whole experience yeah that would be mad <laughs> I think I'd be too scared like in a place where because like we were in London so we spoke the language but if yeah, oh fun. we it's funny enough like we didn't care we were <laughs> I guess we weren't um generally we weren't so happy in our host families in the Netherlands so when we had like a weekend away with our friends we were like careless <laughs> and, like nothing can be worse than our host families so like just let's enjoy it and people were really nice because we were 16 but we looked like 13 I guess 12 so no one was rude or anything to us they were very nice and they didn't mind speaking english to us <laughs> yeah that makes sense okay so the final question is something that i ask everyone and that is what is the best piece of advice that you've ever been given oh that i have ever been given um okay so i think this is one that i got from my mom because i've never I didn't have like all great, um, all of from all of my internships, I didn't have all of them to be great experiences, but my mom taught me not to leave on a bad note from places because you never know um, what you're going to need from that person, even though it's a shitty person, maybe. But that's really funny. I think it happened for me very naturally. I have friends in every single place that I've been to, that I've worked at, and I always left there. I didn't like the job so much. I didn't love the work or I didn't like some people. But every single place that I left, at least one person told me, okay, so if you need anything in your life, just like, let me know if I can help you. If you decide that you want to work with, I don't know, health law or business law, just come back, we want you back. And you were always going to have a place here. I think it's so good because it gives you more freedom to try out new things. So 
okay, so if, if I necessarily need a job, if I want to work a job, I have this option because that person is leaving the door open for me. So just like leave your doors open. That's really good, yeah. Especially in like three of the topics that we've spoken about, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that is everything. I've really enjoyed this episode. It's been so interesting, such a range of topics covered. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for being a guest. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I love the conversation. <laughs>